Um, whoa. Uh, very big welcome to you all. Um, very good turnout, but I, I knew it would be. And uh, I'm not going to say much. I'm Geoffrey Dennis, uh, the course leader of BA Fine Art. And we're delighted to welcome Richard Tuttle uh, to Chelsea. Um, there's nothing much I can say um, as uh, by way of introduction that you don't already know about his work and hasn't been said by many people much more able than me. Uh, and I'm sure you've all seen his installation at Tate Modern and his retrospective at uh, Whitechapel. Um, all I would add to that, and I know this has been said by other people, is that I first heard about uh, Richard's work through other artists many years ago, um, sometime in the 1980s, I think. And uh, I think it's always an extremely good sign when your first word of another artist's work is, is through the excited tones of an artist who says, oh, you must look at Richard Tuttle. There's a sort of uh, intuitive um, understanding that this is an extremely sensitive and exciting artist at work here that demands attention. Um, so I'll stop babbling on and hand over to Richard. Um, uh, he has a talk here uh, that he thinks maybe will last about half an hour, but he's very keen to get some dialogue going with you lot. Um, so there'll be uh, t time for question and answers later. And um, anyway, more of that when the time comes. Thank you. Richard. Thank you. Thank you. To believe you can say what you mean means others can say what they mean, too. It changes the way you listen. This is a note toward me, but I'm going to read it to you as well. Read towards the underpinning language the people are on and of the crust under them to which they are enjoined. Okay. Uh, why you should know yourself It's in 16 parts. One, an extraordinary thing has happened as of last spring. The writing that I do has caused to take a turn toward meter in which every line is broken in the same length much easier for people to understand than if run on. It first happened in the Brooklyn Rails Augustus piece. Now it continues in the short texts I wrote for the Whitechapel checklist, labels, and descriptions. To be stranded in London to see my show, the Whitechapel, again, is work motivated solely. It is a treasure beyond belief to have. Two, poised between the past, represented by Walt Whitman and Washington Irving, <coughs> and the future, represented by corruption, ignorance, and slavery, the pleasure of fitting in
the pain of not. Who would not choose the stoic? Yet the pain of old age is too great not to look more admiringly at pleasure. Even a shirt which is too expensive, yet it can be so fashionable as not noticed. The Walt Whitman phenomenon. He must have been organized enough to keep notebooks of his writings. Yet the autobiography is spotty at best. Self-edited? Why? The glimpses it presents like photographs show an enormous journalistic talent until it collapses in face of the need for poetry. His feelings are so intense, descriptive, incomplete. He himself sees poetry and poems everywhere. Why am I so interested in written form of language? Is this motivation to feel alive at all costs? To live above the black unknown and never reach it? I do not get so much from my successes as working towards them. Three, the emptiness I felt at the Whitechapel show today. Why don't I expect a lot from myself? I do, but there is a sense of self, perhaps inherited that bequeaths lethargy, cheerlessness, self-absorption, and a hysteria of deprivation out of which less loss dominates feelings toward others. I don't know where it comes from. I think I share it with my brother, in whom it looks like egoism, an inability to silence the inactive and return to others. It is that which, though an inherent part of my nature, makes me unable to bring myself in line with fulfillment through work. Four, it's like the time I went to cities where I knew no one nor spoke the language to try to be alone. Now I am old. A few days in London is like a retreat into self I crave. I could find the demon as well as the angel I prefer. Yesterday, the human hell of rush hour on the central line and the euphoria of pre-Christmas Oxford Street. The snippets of Whitman, the way he writes, calling them scraps, are like leaves 
leaves of grass. Surely the people is grass. Ecclesiastes. If I get really alone, I do not feel responsibility for my work. Yet may meet the dark demon. That's why it's best to be alone among people, like in a hotel or big city. I write best in a cafe or small restaurant. That's what cities are made for. I can't really be alone among trees, says one city dweller. Yet I am alone with emptiness, and I associate being alone with being empty. Being together with the horror of loneliness. Though there is no time to feel, thus it's horror, I suppose. Five. The best part of the Wallace collection is the European armor, I thought today, rather than the second rate or school of or after so-and-so, it was first rate for what it was. Richard Wallace must have collected early and well in the recent period of 19th century romantic collecting, also resulting in the Metz collection, for example. In addition, Richard seems to have identified with the historic field and used it to find a beauty in history. As a child, I experienced my intelligence in such a way as not to feel dominated by that of others. Though in protecting mine from theirs, I thought theirs inferior to mine, thus missing aspects of theirs I could have used, like scientific denotative inventory. Six. To ask someone to draw something is like asking someone to write something. Lines which do not exist in nature accumulate and are selected by the draftsperson. They can go in the direction of painting or drawing. A drawing happens when line becomes real. A viewer can have connoisseurship. Connoisseurship, once real, can have many degrees and specializations. Anyone can apprehend realnesses, yet some of the advanced forms of real concern just a few people and are hard to tell from the unreal. Artists are masters of cognition of the line. If you speak of line moving in the direction of painting and writing, you have to speak of Homer and the epic. For that is the natural endpoint of revealing. J. 
just as the smallest, most dainty, inconsequential line could achieve the real. The epic has the same work. It seems to me if these two extremes are in place as they must, drawing and painting are also in place, the line does not exist. Each person is comfortable with one. Who am I, you ask, you can ask. And you will see you fall on one side or the other. I do not know what drawing is, though I can know it is not painting. For sculpture, you have to go back to the non-existent line where we perceive existence erroneously, but can know beyond experience. For a two sculpture is not created by light movement there is no three-dimensional movement, as there is no three-dimensional poetry, though you may have three-dimensional line in the same places you have no line, too, of course. <coughs> the terms of perception are restrictive. The base of sculpture becomes prescriptive. What Carl Andre did with the base is far more important than what he did with on top. You can't look at a base the same way you can look at a frame without objectivity. It means a search is on to find a brand new free space on the concrete side of things, which we must not think of as real. Seven, something is wrong. My energy disappears. Exposure wears one away. I'll be happy when the Whitechapel show is over. Yet I like to show my work. People to see my work. But negativity grows sends its message clear through to me. Work goes in so many different directions. I had two falls, banging my knee, bookending <coughs> the looking for love prints, for example. The recovery from the second is still going on both the outer and the inner wound, causing inactivity, activity restarted, causing more pain to discover. I wonder my milking the community teat. I don't need to use it. Toenails too far to reach when you can share some of the same <coughs> ticket. Eight. Sculpture. Walt Whitman. He wasn't there, the best of gales. <coughs> Coming to an eagle. Tagaja. Oyster pound. 
the gut family, Long Island, it's all right, holding up a storm, then loved it. They don't care, they don't know, at his fingertips, court man. <coughs> Nine. Why I came back to London this time, I needed to be sure of my life. I was the same person I was. <coughs> sometimes I want to grow and change, and sometimes I do not want to change. I knew how to write those wall texts for labels at the Whitechapel. The work told me. But I do not know what I crave. The real seems bound to a wall, not seen. But at that moment, I know the wall is there. Hence, the real is there. No knowledges replace truth, yet truth replaces knowledge. Those who agree form a community that uses truth as knowledge. Why I get nervous about fans. I prefer a collection of individuals who have their own individual truths rather than shared conformity or knowledge. 10. In the same century, fundamentally concerned with unity, unity was lost. Lincoln took it up, became a unionist, as Walt Whitman phrased it, creating a doctrine against opposition to save the unity through a terrible war, bloodshed, and death, as the whole disunited world watched what would happen. It required a martyr, the martyr who held the union together, a man of poetic stature above the thousands of small statues. Yet the world was, and still is, broken. And no one talks of union. Art and the man single relief. So much has to do with keeping up your spirit. I need my spirit to be healthy and strong to fight my body's enemies. I feel my job is to keep Maymay's spirits up too. But right now, I have so little extra strength to spare. I feel bad about that. What has depressed my spirit? On this side, Chicago. Mansion. Oil. There doesn't need to be an electric light bulb. I would drop every artifice to have nature. 11. I remember being at the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. I stayed at the same hotel where Washington Irving stayed 150 years before. His name was known to me, of course, as it would be to any reasonably educated person then. 
But I had a distance. I had learned to vaguely to trust, distrust, and wanted to know why. His name came up recently. I read his legend of Sleepy Hollow, Rip Van Winkle again, and other stories. He is called an American romantic, to which I take note the early romantics being a special interest. It fascinates to see trends well known visually cross over to the verbal. His book is called The Sketchbook. A first case of the writer making a career for himself through popularity, like an artist. What impresses, though, is his nature and humanity, not to mention craft. There is always humor of a deep, warm generation and an aura of the still pre-industrialized grandeur of the Hudson River Valley. The writing done while young is fresh, insightful, and loose. The capturing of natural forces, like Pollux later on, nothing stupid, base, or foul. He must have been representative as well as individual, something I am not, alas. Someone from whom a second book was awaited, though he wrote some. One like that never came again. That wraps him in the same diffident grandeur as his own valley, romantically. 12. Why did I never expect to have a big success? I think I am as good at, or even better than Picasso. Many contemporary artists are more famous, have more money, are written about with higher respect. But I do not think they are better. In fact, I think most of them are worse. Big careers are strenuous. If over strenuous, energy will be taken away from the work for compensation. Though on the world stage, I do not feel famous. What I hope for is, for is, each person to internalize my work. Think of themselves, not me. For them to be famous, to them. There are artists for whose work you have to work to gain its experience, to make it your own. It becomes a tool by which you create yourself. It is better if you don't have to think of the artist's name you use, though I am still shocked to find myself so unknown. Obviously, that is because I do not trust the process I believe in, like Hogarth. It is better, divine, in fact, to trust the process rather than the appearance. <coughs> 13. When I look at the Whitechapel show, it looks like I try too hard. Is it to gain success or to achieve my goals? 
I fear for competition, which is not in art, but happy if it is because of my goals, which are entirely within art. Though interested, I am almost afraid to listen to others or take information from the page, as it will pollute me, knock me off my way, or take a moment away from my own thoughts. The absorption borders on narcissism. Thank heavens, I hate myself so. But what am I thinking? I wanted to go to bath today, but put it off. 14. Have I suffered the delusion my time is the height of heights? Must we think our time is the best of times? Many, example, many an example is found of artists trying to equal past achievements only to make something better than those. Heroes inevitably <coughs> fall, though we profess shock. It is better to admire unilaterally excesses or slights fall inside the light of your own admiration for yourself. And one is not shocked to discover excellence before is greater than your own, and thereby not be able to see the excellence in you. 15. When I pour my heart out in public and make such an effort, reach such depths I usually hide or don't even know are there, I wonder why the audience does not notice. So much is to feel alive to life, which is the need for ambiguity, not to be dead to life, which is why we eliminate ambiguity. Even artists don't know what you mean by ambiguity. I could never understand the dictums of the Iron Age. Why so much is lost for so little gain? Obviously, many feel the opposite. Though I try to win the battle, I am continually marginalized, patronized, belittled, or laughed at, instead of engaged as in a fight. Whitman notices, without irony or judgment, how the silent death of a brave soldier happens within earshot of laughter or card players totally absorbed in their game. Is there a third possibility where ambiguity and non-ambiguity are equal and the same? 16. In the Turbine Hall project, I see a light in my mind which stops the rising just above the level of the horizontal front-facing disk. It comes from the floor. It is around the red. It's just another captured subject. 
a mystic light. Time put it there, the time of nature. I went to see it. The light was there. When I turned to look at it again, the light snatched up the energy from the floor and put it on all the undersides of the yellow airfoils. That's what people were seeing. It made me extremely happy. Walking home, I liked all the people I saw. What made me feel they and their language are one? Thank you. That was, uh, congratulations, that was a long, heavy, heavy session. I, 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 uh, I mean, these, uh, but it, it, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you know, my, my wife's a, a poet and, um, and very mindful of uh, how language is changing and, uh, and, and how uh, we, we can't take in stuff uh, like we used to. And, uh, uh, and so it becomes a, a case of uh, paying a little attention to, to how, what's going on. And, um, and I, so I thought this, uh, um, what happened um, where, uh, you know, um, I, I study a lot of languages that are in, inflected, you know, unlike the English language. And, and, and so I'm and mindful of, uh, that there are things you can say in an inflected language that you can't say in an uninflected language. And so how to, uh, and if, if that's something that's going on, and, and, and so this uh, breaking of meter, uh, a, a funny thing happened with this text. Uh, I sent it to be printed, and uh, it came back. Uh, and the uh, was com the the uh, computer completely edited it, <laughs> yeah. and, and it, it was uh, 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 in a way uh, amusing because it, it it's like the turbine hall uh, where um, we needed uh, the most advanced uh, imaging techniques, you know, to 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 make that, uh, but. You know, I said that I, I don't. I I will don't show them to me. I don't care. I don't want to know. I'm only looking at the image in my head. You know, I'm only looking at in there. And um, and I did look sometimes at the images that were. You know, and uh, it was uh, actually so shocking that I decided to go back and look at the image in my head because it was a lot better. But <laughs> anyway, at the end, what you have is it's not a case where one is better than the other or something, but it's, it's you, you make something where all the good things that come from um, uh, operations of off on and everything are, are there and then all the things that could never be there that way are also there. And so it's just not, it, you know, it's to avoid the, the notion of, of uh, uh, Okay, so um, th now that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, expressing why I uh, uh, thank you for, for uh, being the, 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 uh, uh, the audience. <laughs> um, Richard, I think there are a few people that uh, would, might like to put you some questions. Would that be okay? Or? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, could I kick off with, with one? Um, your, your, your Whitechapel show and your talk today um, eloquently make that simple link between text that seems enormously important to you and textile. Um, and I'd never before noticed the link in the words there. Um, 
But I wondered if you could say, I know you have this growing uh, interest in textile itself as a, as a form, um, both and its, its metaphorical implication and also its, 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 its practical implications in terms of making a, a piece of art. Um, and, and clearly it's so important in the, in the, in the Tate Modern piece uh, in, in, in relation to the wooden structure. Um, I wondered if you'd like to say any more to that. Or? Um, I, um, yeah, um, well, I guess the uh, what I uh, the, an advocate of um, of fully um, uh, realizing uh, um, what we have uh, in. Um, the creative uh, dimension. Um, I find, um, uh, for example, um, I'm a person who doesn't seem to be able to have any understanding coming in from the side of, uh, of a subject or a, a, a situation. And I inevitably uh, make moves to get to some uh, Origin, you know, some case of origin, and and that that could be uh, connected with the artist uh, um, because on uh, in, in, in some level the the artist will uh, f function in the society to 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 dig down into the the very heart of the society and bring back something which has been overlooked, forgotten, that could be actually very useful. I mean, lots of things are being forgotten. But, but the fact that they're not forgotten means they're not accessible. And so it's the creative uh, uh, capacity, uh, one, of an artist to go and find them. And then, of course, the um, creative facility of the viewer uh, to see them. And, um, uh, but the, uh, the, the language uh, is uh, I mean, coming out of a, a question about um, the ground you know, and what is, what is the ground. And you, know, you all can do your, your work, or all, all of us can do our work, but uh, the, un, unless it sits on a ground that's true, uh, it's, it, it doesn't seem to uh, resonate or to, uh, to be what... So maybe... Um, uh, I mean, that, that's a, a, another one of these... these Issues at the moment for me, like I, I take this position, uh, you know, I am for better art. <laughs> That's you know, and and uh, and so uh, why I would come here, you know, is because all of you are are potentially somebody who can, or your art can be something which will give me better art, you know. So that's why I I try to do or act or behave, uh, and. Um, but uh, uh, and uh, th there is a uh, uh, I don't know. Some of you may have picked up that there's an exaggeration uh, where you know you can get so involved with this, your program that uh, uh, it becomes more important than your work itself, <laughs> and that's not good. You know, uh, so it, it's. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, I think the, uh, yeah, so um, the, uh, uh, I, uh, I guess uh, another, re this was a very important for, for me was uh, uh, as, a, as a child, uh, I had uh, a kind of, uh, you know, mystic experiences where I saw the world uh, it's like molecularly um, perfect. Um, and um, 
uh, that uh, I, I guess I've uh, and I've, I've actually gone out. That was a motivating in factor of my life to and you know to artists, a lot of artists, because they seem to be the ones who could say what that was. Uh, but actually, I haven't met anyone. Uh, even I use the phrase mystic experience, uh, but it was a huge uh, shaping. Uh, and I, I think every drawing, every work I make is, uh, is uh, I mean, the kind of happiness of, uh, um, that comes from wanting to give that to share that with with other people and the and the odd uh, in writing for this catalog uh, the idea popped out uh, that uh, that language our language and you know anybody's language per se uh, has a mystery has a mysterious quality to it for us um, and that the notion came out that it's uh, uh, why as this young child I could look at the world and see it as perfect came from uh, out of this out of the center of the mystery of language um, and so I, th this, uh, what I tried to write about in the last section was uh, a, a, a sense that the, uh, the people, the, you know, walking along that street, that that person that I meet, that I like so much, you know, is the, uh, is the per person uh, who is the same as their language. And, I mean, I just feel, I mean, even reading this here, sometimes I lost, but I try, you know, I mean, I, I, that's why I speak of you as the audience, because as, a, as in my position, I have a feeling for the audience, and I, I could feel when the attention was, I was losing the attention, all I had to do was go back in my head to, uh, uh, and the operative word is uh, uh, what did I say? En, uh, enjoined, enjoined. That we are enjoined with our language in such a way that we are our language, and that makes me so happy. And then my voice became happy, and then everybody woke up like that, you know, because it's like it's. I mean, I get into some pretty dark stuff here, but basically the message is is really happy, you know. Right. I mean, um, anyway, lots of questions, and I, I thank, and that's another reason I'm grateful because it's, as far as I'm concerned, this was completely experimental. You know, this is not a canned. You know, it's not. No. Uh, it's brilliant to share it with you. Mm -hmm. um, we'll we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, if you could wait for the steward to bring the microphone to you, but I'll start off with one here, so I can. Thank you for that. Uh, I was immediately, actually it wasn't immediately, it was about halfway through, I started to think about Rilke's letters uh, uh, to young poets yes, and, uh, yes. and I really felt that sense of who were you talking to and it felt as much as if you were talking as much to yourself as to this other person and I really, really enjoyed that. It was Good. actually totally got to me. I wanted to respond to the images and to your work and talk or ask you about the way in which two things. First of all, the work on the walls always <coughs> seem to radiate out. This is one of the things I've, I've always been interested in your work, is there's a radiation that it, it, it breaks against a sort of the hermetic quality of much of what I see. And I'm always, when I see your work, there's this radiating out quality oh. that embraces and enjoins with the space in which it is being shown. And the second thing I wanted to talk about was the way in which your sculptures seem to connect me to temples or pavilions. Huh. And these are sort of architectural elements that have always interested me in your work. Mm. 
I wondered if you'd like to respond to any of those. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, um, <coughs> I mean, I, uh, this is, I mean, the title of this talk is, uh, 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 you know, why uh, you uh, should know yourself. <laughs> and the emphasis is on, on you, on, on every, every, every person. Because, um, uh, uh, the it, it seems uh, I don't I don't want to get uh, sloppy, but there's you know there's a there's a, a sense there's a uh, uh, nature. Uh, Runs according. There's a, a sort of a, a logic. I, I just uh, pops in my mind. I was reading about the year 1913 recently uh, as a signal year. I mean, art, most amazing art happened at that time in the literature. And, um, and of course, it was just before the outbreak of, of war. Uh, but um, uh, this writer I was reading uh, happened to include what was going on in the weather that year. And you know you had the, the hottest temperature in Earth, Death Valley that had ever happened. You know the highest floods. You know that the, all of nature was going bonkers like that. And, and and you know the artist is that much part of nature that your work is expresses like that. Okay, so I'm right now, uh, you know, trying to experience. What I am, you know, as a, what what I've I've been made at as, you know, and uh, and one of the things that strikes me uh, as, astonishingly is this contradiction of why somebody who is as like a thousand percent anti-war as I am, you know, would nevertheless lead their life as a soldier. You know? I mean, I get, wake up in the morning and start fighting. You know? Okay, so um, excuse me, it takes a Long time. Anyway, the uh, what strikes me uh, is the um, this uh, issue in the twentieth. I mean, I am born in the middle of the twentieth century. I my soul, you know, is going to partake of of that, and. Uh, and I, I look at uh, 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 myself, uh, and, uh, and that's uh, another, uh, the, the Turbine Hall uh, project is the kind of project I hope everyone has in their life one time, when you are asked to do something that can only be done by being who you are, not a tiny bit more, not a tiny bit less, but who you are. And in that case, you, uh, uh, well, you're offered a, a, a bigness that's bigger than all the stuff you've decided to hide from other people or yourself or so on. Um, and, um, okay. All right, so I find um, the 20th century uh, has this uh, central problem of, uh, can be uh, spoken of as a breakdown of the natural unity of art and the human being. Um, in the bottom of our souls, each of us knows that th there's the, the, uh, our humanity and, and our, and I'm using the Greek word uh, techno, so including science as well as visual, you know, creative arts and writing and all of that, that all the things we do and who we are as human beings is meant to be a unity. But 
for some reason, well, it's not for some reason. Uh, I and my certain sensitive members of my generation experienced profoundly a sense of being born into a world that was broken. And, and whether we wrote or we created, the whole object of, was to, to uh, fix what was broken. And it's not just until recently that I, I asked myself, well, what's broken? Uh, even though, uh, for example, a characteristic of my generation would be uh, to make something where you're joining the floor and the wall, um, where um, the floor being the concrete side of things and the wall being the abstract side of things, you know, which art is always concerned uh, with, uh, you know, the, uh, it's a, like that's the eternal job of art is to make a connection between the concrete and the and the abstract, but each artist uh, has uh, their own way to, and it has to be continuously reinvented, redone. Well, our generation just said, well, hey, you know, like, uh, I mean, and, but in a, you know, if there were a sensitive critic in the world, they would say, well, look how important it was for these people um, uh, that they, uh, they were able to see because of the importance they felt in their hearts. It was, they could see that the floor represents a concrete and the wall represents an abstract. So you put a, you know, a stick or something. And uh, I, my work uh, uh, where, uh, you know, I would make something that could go on the floor, on the wall, or, you know, this... Uh, uh, is just char a characteristic, uh, like a generational char characteristic. But the uh, it was a, uh, okay, a an archaic uh, moment in the history of the world. So uh, that's why you still see some of us, like myself, out there contributing. Um, okay, now to your question. I'm sorry, uh, but the um, uh, I've always felt. Uh, uh, very bad about 20th century art. I find the, uh, the art that uh, is part of the expression of the art is analogous to the uncounted millions of genocides that the 20th century experienced. And that those genocides came because of the split between humanity and, and what humanity makes. So in every way I could and can and will, uh, I will um, make something uh, that uh, is not empty, but it's full. One, if one speaks of uh, wire pieces, uh, but but it, uh, also I, uh, something happened there that I don't I don't really like because it's uh, I'm painting a picture of of someone who is uh, like uh, determined somehow. Uh, in a functioning kind of way, and they're just they're just performing that function. We can just say that they they try hard, or they they uh, uh, I mean, not to make mistakes and things like that. But but I I, I don't subscribe to the uh, uh, to the idea of the the artist as. Uh, uh, as, as uh, you could say, the uh, motivator. And in fact, I feel the hardest job uh, for the creative person is to get out of the way uh, and to not... Um, uh, uh, that's why I, I, there's this phrase in there about if I, if I can get really alone, then the responsibility uh, 
as author or, or motivator uh, uh, disappears. Um, but it's, it's, it's not, I mean, there's also a question of, uh, uh, we all should face about, uh, because, you know, artists uh, are members of society, despite what uh, a lot of evidence, but the, um, the, um, uh, how, uh, I think I, I think there's there is a lot of thought going on at the moment of how to move the the um, concept of of the individual as a source for society's art um, uh, away from the individual um, and it's uh, uh, okay so anyway I'm uh, uh, not, uh, uh, I, I think uh, something, because I can't see what you, everybody's seeing, so I, I'm, not getting, I'm, not, I'm not making the connections. And then if I go out there, then I I'm, I'm, have my back turned, it, so it's, it's a little problematic. The slideshow continues, Richard, it behind does, you. It does, yeah. um, I, I, Anyway, did I come anywhere near a uh, response, you know, for that? And I, I love your necklace, by the way. <laughs> I think we have time for just one more question um, because the responses, as you can tell, are very, uh, very, very deep and full. Um, so I'm going to go here. Um, perhaps just before we take that last question, um, I think Richard and I would both like to thank uh, Joe Bruton from Chelsea College of Arts and Merrick Kaufman from Stuart Shave Modern Art for making this uh, evening possible. So thanks very much to them. But one last question. Thank you very much. I went to see both shows. My name's Jenny. I'm doing the MA Fine Art. My question really is about... I found your work quite semiotic. I really semiotic. love it. Yeah, I love it. And I find that the poetry that you had next to your work inspired me to write some more concrete poems. But my key question is that the choice of materials and the colours that they have, mm. what is that play between the material and the colour? Does the material make the colour, or does the colour make the material? What's going on? Uh, yeah, oh, you're very, very, very clever. Yeah, no, that's a wonderful thing. I mean, uh, one of the things that's going on in the, uh, in the Tate, and hopefully in the Whitechapel, you can see a 40-year you know, history of just what you're talking about. But one of the uh, achievements of the, of, you know, as we all know, that the textile goes droopy, you know, and shows, you know, it, it has issues of, of uh, you know, gravity. I mean, while well, you run through the house and poof, the pillows before the guests arrive and that, that sort of thing. Um, but um, um, but the, uh, one of the things the, the Tate piece does is, is divide uh, between uh, the side uh, where gravity must take place uh, um, and then the uh, other side where the viewer might be <coughs> astonished because there's no change. The piece is supposed to be there six months. And uh, perhaps in you know, some more months you you can go go there, and as, as far as the issue you're raising, you know you'll you'll see that it's very much there and maybe more interesting because you have, it's a second visit, and that's a that's an issue as as, as well because um, mm. um, I mean I wanted to make a piece that uh, uh, will uh, have the level of interest that people who work at the Tate and see that every day can find something new in it, you know, and, uh, until the very last, last day. Okay, so, um, all right. So what happens there in the relation between color and material uh, is, uh, okay, very simply said, um, where, 
Um, the, uh, okay, so there's an interaction of a structure and a skin. In that interaction of the structure and the skin, this kind of magic happens where color can be free of the materials. Um, and uh, this, is, this is very delightful to, to me uh, because I'm uh, uh, what, a lover of my own country, <laughs> I should say. Uh, but uh, um, Americans don't have the painter's gene. They, they simply, I mean, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. You know. uh, and I mean, you know, if, if you love, love painting. And so, uh, you know, I always used to say that our best painters are the ones who figured out how to paint without having to paint. That's what Pollock is, you know, the drip, you know, like, uh, whoa, I guess, you know, you, feel, you could make a painting without, you know, actually picking up a brush. And, the, and Barnett Newman is also uh, that, that sort of the simplicity of the strike. There, there are many examples like that. Okay, so um, what's going on uh, there? Uh, and that, and it, there's one piece at the, uh, the Whitechapel Gallery where you can see that happening already is uh, the, um, that, Suddenly, the color that's released from the fabric colors better than any paint could ever do. And thus, this is another example of this American who's figured out how to paint without having to paint, you know, sort of thing. And, you know, uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, I've, I've have a, made a new friend here who's in the uh, uh, front row and is a, a, a very interested in my great friend Agnes Martin. Um, and I, I, I met a, a, a young artist uh, and uh, uh, who was making very fast uh, uh, landscape uh, <coughs> paintings. Um, and what they were, he was using oil. And I said, well, gosh, you know, that doesn't make sense. I mean, if you don't want to go that fast, you know, why don't you use, you know, acrylic, you know, or some you know, paint that goes fast. He says, and this is a guy, I don't know, is, uh, he said, I could never do that because Agnes Martin has done the only really beautiful thing you can do with acrylics, you know. <laughs> okay, you know, like that. and 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 uh, it's to thin them down and make them into washes. Yeah. All the you know the paintings from the late seventies and the eighties, and you know they're all. I mean, and, uh, she painted them actually. Uh, uh, you know, the heart, you know, turned ninety degrees, and she would always say the. Um, she had to do that because the uh, climate in New Mexico is so dry uh, that she, uh, uh, by the time she, if she painted them the way they're supposed to be painted, by the time she came to the end, it would be dry, it would be dry, you know, and then they, you know, it wouldn't have the effect of the color, you know, which is a very nice story. Uh, but I like the story of this young artist better where, I mean, it's, it's, tr it's true that the, uh, uh, you know, and, and that's a whole other discussion, but, but you know, paint is a question of a pigment and, a, and the medium, and acrylic happens to be plastic, you know, and, and so, you know, how beautiful can plastic be, you know, and, uh, but uh, in, in a very sort of poetic, even mystical way, Agnes figured out how to water it down uh, to, to add the, the element of watering it down to a degree which worked both physically and aesthetically. You know. And this young kid just grasped it like, you know, like, you know I could never do that. You know, like, I think. Mm. So I guess we, we need to... 
Thank you very, very, very much. I think, unfortunately, time moves on and we have to let uh, Richard go. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, thank you very much.